we've bought our silks, they're in use, um, but what we know is that we should regularly inspect them. So how am I going to inspect a silk and what sort of things am I looking for? First thing, if you're going to inspect your silks, you should take it off the attachment. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's the area that's taking the most strain and that's the area where it's likely to have come into contact with something sharp um, or be put under tension. So always uh, take off the attachment and inspect the whole silk. Make sure that you've got a good light behind you um, mm -hmm. and either spread it open and just check it the whole way mm -hmm. from the ground the whole way down or chuck it over your head, spread it open. It will depend on the width of the silks if you can do that. If you've got like three metre wide silks you're not going to be able to do that. But if it's an narrow enough silk, you can toss it over yourself with a good light coming from behind and check for any flaws. One of the means that we've used for doing it in the past is to use a uh, fluorescent tube mm -hmm. um, and have that plugged in and then pass this across yeah. the top slowly so you yeah. can actually see it too. Yeah, so make sure you don't burn it. Yeah, <laughs> not with a fluorescent <laughs> tube, I think we'll be fine. Um, so that's how we'd actually identify um, if there's anything in it which looks yeah. Um, off. So what sort of things, what sort of dangers are we going to see uh, in there and at which point um, should we retire it? Yeah. What you're going to see is probably dependent on the way that the material has been produced, whether it's a trico warp um, net or whether it's just a standard net. There's all different um, types of way that the, the silk, the fabrics are manufactured. Some fabrics are prone to getting a run in them if you've got any little sequence whatever on your equipment and it can be enough or are we pulling your nail enough to give it a run. Um, some fabrics that are made of seed nylon are more prone to burns so if you're wearing equipment and you do um, a slide on it you're more likely to burn. Polyester is not so likely. Um, the, um, if you've got a silk that is um, less stretchy and particularly if it's got nylon in it you're more likely to see burns on it. Um, you can have other damage, you can have vertical holes, kind of horizontal holes that are just caused by, um, by use in them. And they all have different, you would deal with them in different ways. Okay, so uh, let's talk about any hull at first. What's the danger to um, the person on the silks uh, with some of the smaller yeah. holes? So you can, there can be a danger to the person to their fingers and their toes for a start and that they can get them caught in the holes. But there's also the danger in that they can reduce the strength of the equipment that you're on. So they can reduce the strength of the silks. So you must be aware of that and follow your manufacturer's guidelines with it. Is it possible to repair tears in silks? Mm -hmm. I personally, if I had a small hole which was running verti vertically, I would repair that because it's running in the direction of your pool. So it's not reducing, in my opinion, the strength of the silks greatly. Um, if there was a hole running horizontally, I would retire it immediately. I wouldn't care if it was a week old, the silks, I would just retire them. Or maybe cut them at that length and make them into hammock and find other uses for them. Yeah, I mean, with the, our silks, I mean, as uh, we're going with our manufacturer's guidelines, because uh, as are coming from fire toys yeah. and any holes, any we, holes. Uh, we, yeah. we retire them or turn them into smaller hammocks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a, a, a general guide on inspections. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually trying to find um, holes, we're trying to find burns, we're trying to find imperfections within that. Mm -hmm. um, now, each silk comes with a recommended lifespan. Yeah. Um, and um, it, so it's not always just a decision to look for imperfections. Mm -hmm. um, there's also usually a certain number of hours and um, in use, as mm -hmm. well as the age of the silks itself. Absolutely. And there are other things as well. So, for example, if you're using your cells outdoor all the time, then you've got UV um, damage on it. If you're using them by the sea, you've got salt damage. So, when the manufacturers give you a guideline of the lifetime, they're not saying that no matter what happens, that still, you can use it for that length of time. They're saying under normal conditions and with no imperfections, you can use it for that time. So, you have to bear that in mind. Um, and obviously to obtain, to be able to use them for the time the manufacturer says, you must care for them in the way they've given, in the washing instructions, etc. So you've got to um, follow their guidelines and if you do that then they should you should have the lifespan of them yeah. that they recommend. So with, with our silks that we've been using, uh, we will put them in a washing machine, not mm -hmm. a top loader but a front loader, yeah. um, and we'll put it on uh, a low temperature, cold usually, and not use any detergent. Absolutely. Or fabric softener. Or fabric softener. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and on the subject of different chemicals, mm -hmm. um, 
uh, there's lots of questions we get asked uh, about those uh, at the same time. So mm-hmm. things like, um, to use a brand name, Febreze, mm-hmm. um, to stop smelly silks. Yeah, you would not use that. You wouldn't put that one at all. There's another question I think a lot of people have been asking recently about fire retardant, um, because the silks, the, the fabrics that we use are not, they don't have fire, fire retardant on them. And if you do apply a chemical like that onto them, then basically the the manufacturers wouldn't rec- wouldn't guarantee the silks then. Yeah, it exactly. Not to be used. Yeah. So um, since none of the silks have been tested with fire retardants or any other sorts of chemicals, if you're putting those chemicals on, then that's definitely not recommended by the uh, the, the manufacturer because um, that's not been tested. Um, so the results of that will be unpredictable. And that came to light actually recently with people using all sorts of different chemicals onto fabrics for COVID. And they were saying if you apply hydrogen peroxide and things like this, and no, just no. Yeah, indeed. 